Okay, so we continue our lesson through the HTTP IP application layer. This lecture, we'll talk about uh, protocol stack of the internet's standard protocol stack, which involves TCP IP, and I'll talk a little bit, give a little bit of example about an application layer protocol, what that would look like. We're not going, again, not into too much detail, but you should know what this protocol stack looks like because anytime you want to use, uh, use the internet, so if you want to write code to access the internet, you're going to be using this stack, the protocol stacker, so you'll want to know uh, something about how it works. So typically, when you're using the internet, this is sort of a standard protocol stack that you see right here. This is not the same as the OSI protocol stack. The OSI protocol stack has seven layers and it's more complicated. This is simplified. This has four layers in it. Top layer is the application layer. Below that is the transport layer, where you see TCP slash UDP, that's transport layer. Then below that you see IP, which is, uh, that's called the network layer, and that's the internet protocol that's there. And then below that is what's called the data link layer. Actually, there's really two different layers merged there, data link and physical. So the bottom layer is the physical, uh, the very bottom that you don't see there is merged into the physical, where actually wires, uh, drive it onto the wires, drive the signal onto wires or onto the radio. And actually, if we look at these layers, so there's code associated with each layer, right? There are uh, typically library functions. So in practice, in this specialization, when you write network code, and you will later, when you work on network code, we'll be talking about, you'll be calling application layer library functions. Only top layer, right? You don't have to worry about the lower layers at all, almost at all, right? Just the top layer is what you're really going to be dealing with. But this whole stack has already been implemented and it will be given to you. So you'll, you'll have you'll download free stack that looks like this, but the function that you'll be calling will be all top layer application layer. Uh, but just to say a little bit about some of these layers, there's, um, so, yeah, so this IP, we already talked about that, TCP, UDP, and the data links of physical. Application layer, these are, the, these are protocols that directly interact with the applications. So whatever kind of application is you're writing, if it's a network application, it will have some kind of a network protocol and application layer protocol that it works with. So for instance, uh, naming some, some application protocols, SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol. That is a protocol used by mail, mail clients, right? If you've got an email client, it might be using SMTP to communicate with the mail server. Uh, HTTP, hypertext transfer protocol. Now, you've heard of that, HTTP colon, you've seen this in your URLs, right, in your addresses on the web. Uh, HTTP colon slash slash whatever. So anything that's HTTP, that's web interaction, which is most likely what you'll, which is most commonly used uh, for, actually in this class, that's what we'll be using later on. And then uh, LPT is another one, like with the daemon, printers talk to each other using that protocol. But there are a lot of these protocols. Uh, file transfer protocols, a bunch of them. If you want to transfer files, maybe you'll use file transfer protocol. Hopefully you'll use SFTP, secure file transfer protocol, because it's better than FTP. But the idea is every application, uh, network application, has its own protocol <clears throat> at the application layer that it uses. So to give you an example, what one of these protocols looks like, let's look a little bit at uh, HTTP. Uh, this is HTTP, this is the uh, this is like a typical request on the web, right? A little hard to see, but <laughs> the, the response message. So it has several lines. Actually, that, that code right there has six lines. The top three lines, the ones in green, those are the header. And the bottom lines in white, those are the body or the, the data, right? Or the, the payload, whatever term you want to use. So the header is going to be basically those top three lines. Now, the header information, it gives information about, about the message, but it's not the actual content. So for instance, we look at the first line, it gives the protocol version, also the message type, 200 OK is, uh, if you look at HTTP protocol, which you can even Google it and get a very large protocol document, 200 OK has a particular meaning. Every response message is going to have a particular code. 200 OK is sort of your standard response, right? So uh, then the next, next line there has a date, the date it was transmitted, and so on. Uh, next line has a content length, so content length, so that's how big the data is. That's inaccurate, but that's an example. It'll have the content length, and there are a lot of different header, of header information you can stick in the header. And then the body, the data that you see there, that's the actual body, uh, the contents of the message. Now, in this example, which is very common, the, uh, if this is a web, if you're asking for a web page, what happens is your machine, your IoT device, let's say, sends a request out to a web server, and the server sends back the contents of the web page, right? And so that your IoT device can render the page and draw it for you on the screen. And so that, what you see there is HTML code, which is the content of a web page. So, you know, this is summarized, but you can see it starts with HTML, ends with HTML, and has a bunch of HTML tags if you're familiar with those. But uh, that is, that would describe a web page. And so if you had a, a web browser on your IoT device, it would read that, that data and then draw the web page, represent it the way that it's supposed to be represented for you. But you can see here that this protocol, this HTTP protocol, is application specific. It's for web transfers. It's got header, some header lines, which may or may not be useful to you, but the data is actually what you want to send. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Now we'll talk about manets, mobile ad hoc networks, and how they're used in Internet of Things to connect Internet of Things objects to bigger networks, to the Internet itself. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about how the code that we're going to write, that you're going to write in class, and how it's, uh, you won't directly have to know the details of these things because you'll be writing generally high level code, but it's still important for you to be familiar with these concepts. So a mobile ad hoc network, a manet, it's a self-configuring network. Okay. By self-configuring, okay. we mean that the, the hosts in the, the know in the network configure themselves because they're moving around all the time. So their connections, their connectivity can change across time. So for instance, in this picture, you see uh, a bunch of nodes. You see a cell phones, some cell phones, a car, right? Whatever the yeah. IoT devices, there are a set of them. And then at the top middle is this access point. So this access point is the thing that connects our manet to the main internet. Okay? Now, manet could be just independent and not connected to the internet at all, but most commonly, we're going to be connecting to the internet some way through an access point. Now, the access point is typically, uh, most usually not mobile. It might be, it could be mobile, but commonly, it's uh, not mobile and often wired, right? And so it'll have wireless connections to all the, to the IoT devices, but it might have a wired connection to the main internet. So the access point maybe isn't mobile, but everything else is. And the way I've drawn the, the diagram up there, I have lines between two nodes if they can connect, if they can communicate directly to each other, meaning if they're in radio range and they have communication, right? So sometimes, uh, like for instance, if you look at the cell phone all the way on the left or the cell phone all the way on the right, they don't have an edge directly between them, okay? Because maybe they're out of range of each other, but they're both within range of the same access point. So they can communicate to each other through that access point, but not directly uh, in this particular configuration. So the connections between these components changes all the time because these things are moving, right? So maybe these two cell phones which couldn't talk to each other before, not directly anyway, they're, you know, the people who have the cell phones, they walk near each other and suddenly there's a connection directly between them. But maybe the car can no one connect to them because they just got out of range because they drove past, right? So these networks, their connections are coming and going over time. Uh, so that's what a mobile ad hoc network is. Now, important aspects of manets, uh, one is a power budget. So you really have to worry about power when you talk oh, about manets okay. because manets, each one of the devices is mobile. These IoT devices, they're all mobile. They're all running off of batteries and the batteries can run out. So uh, you have to generally change the protocol to be more, uh, more, more power uh, restrictive, right? You have to save power somehow. So that, u
So the kind of power that you use to drive the antenna, right? Uh, so the battery is really important because the batteries are heavy, right? I mean, batteries are often the heaviest component, are usually the heaviest component in these systems. I mean, I think about my quadcopter, the battery weighs as much as the rest of the whole copter. I mean, it's so big, right? And that thing lasts for 15 minutes of flight time. It's ridiculous. But you get the same thing with cell phones and all this, where the battery is, if not as heavy as everything else, at least it's the heaviest component in the system and the biggest, component, biggest single component in the system. So uh, battery power is really important when you talk about managed. So you change the protocol to save power. In addition, you typically have a lower data rate. Uh, because you're using less power, you probably have to send data more slowly, so you have less of a lower data rate. Uh, an example, sort of a ballpark example, is take Bluetooth. So you're familiar with Bluetooth, right? Bluetooth, and uh, compare that to Bluetooth Low Energy. So Bluetooth is a network protocol, wireless. Bluetooth Low Energy is, is, a, is also a network protocol derived from Bluetooth, but it's a low energy version of Bluetooth. So Bluetooth, you can send video across Bluetooth. You can get enough data rate sent to, send to transmit video reasonably well, okay? Now, Bluetooth Low Energy, there's no way you get the same data rate. You use a lot less, less, less power, but you get a lot lower data rate, so you can't send video. So the fact that you go into low power restricts you in terms of uh, your data rate, and that restricts your functionality in, in a lot of different ways. Security. Often security costs you in terms of power, right? Okay, so right. security, say you want to do encryption, right? You want to take security. all your messages and encrypt them before sending or something like that. That takes power, right? Take power to do those operations to encrypt the data, decrypt the data. So security has a cost in terms of power. And since you're power constrained, maybe you can't do as much security as you want to do. Also, things like uh, antivirus tools, right? You never see antivirus tools for cell phones, uh, or I think actually I think such a thing exists, but it's not common, right? But if you talk about an IoT device uh, like like a watch or something, they don't have antivirus for that because the computational power just isn't there. You know, it doesn't have the it doesn't have the extra cycles to be able to do antivirus tests at the same time as doing its regular tests. Because uh, you know, because part of that the reason for that is because these IoT devices we talked about this before, they're designed to be much more efficient. Meaning a desktop laptop, you know, 99.9% of the time it is being underutilized. Very rarely are you full utilizing the processor. So it has extra cycles, extra power to be spent doing antivirus tasks or something like that. Embedded systems, which IoT devices are, they don't have those excess cycles, right? They use all the power they have, right? Or most of it. So they don't have extra cycles to just be doing antivirus without hurting the regular function of the system. So security often suffers in an IoT device because you don't have the power budget to do it, and uh, you know, maybe, and also you might not have the cost, you might not have the money to pay for the extra hardware that you would need. Now, in practice, when we do network programming later in the, later in the specialization. There are, many, there are levels in the stack, right? There are different layers in the stack, application, TCP, IP, UDP, and all this, but we don't have to touch those directly in our coding. So when we use an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, you will be calling library functions at the application layer. So your code is gonna be at the application layer, almost exclusively at the application layer. So you call very simple functions which will take care of the details for you. So for instance, uh, as an example, you might have a function called send message, an application layer function that sends a message to an IP address. Maybe you give it, actually typically you give it an IP address and a port number, which we'll talk about later. You call send message and it'll send that message to that IP address and that port number. And all the details of TCP, UDP, IP, and data link, that's all handled by the protocol stack. All you do is call the library function. Same thing on the receipt, maybe there's a receipt message that does the same thing. So you're making these calls at the application layer of these simple library functions, and the details are being handled by the library code itself, so you don't have to worry about that. Thank you. We've been talking about capturing packets on the network interface. I mentioned it before. And now we're going to just try it a little bit, let you see how to do it. Actually, that'll be one of the assignments, too. You can give it a good try. Yeah. So we'll start out by starting the Wireshark app application, which is going to be our packet cap cache tool. So Wireshark, uh, I have the icon down here on the bottom. This is the Shark framework. So I'll start that. So network packet protocol analyzer. So if we look at Wireshark, we'll pull it up a little bit. First thing it does is uh, right at the front screen, it gives me a list of devices, interface list here. Let's click on interface list to see the interfaces. Now right here it's listing four interfaces, four different rows in this little, uh, this little window popped up. Now each one of these interfaces is a network interface that you can capture on. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, wired, uh, Ethernet, and so on. It's a little bit hard to tell which one's the right one, but I already know that it's the bottom one, mostly because the number of packets, notice it's already catching a few packets on that interface, and the other ones are basically dead. So I will click that interface, select that. Now notice the start button. When I, click, when I select start, it will start capturing. So I'll hit start, and Wireshark should start capturing packets. Now notice that Wireshark is, not, Wireshark is blank at the moment. Uh, that's because there are no packets right now, at this moment, on this interface. Uh, there go a few. Okay, it's noticing a little bit of noise. But uh, what I'll do is, I'm curious what those are, but I'll look at those later. So right now, I see they are, one's ARP. All right, so what I'll do now is I'll force some packets onto that interface. What I'll do is I'll start my web browser, so that my web browser can talk to, the web, to a web server, and then this will record the packets that are transferred back and forth. So let's start my browser, let's go Firefox. Okay, now as it's starting, uh, let's just move it out of the way for a second. Yeah, see in the background here, We've got Wireshark capturing lots of packets. So I'm going to tell it stop. We've captured, click on capture. Stop right here. Okay, now it stopped. So we've already gotten over uh, 3,600 packets just in that short amount of time. Now, notice that uh, what's showing here in the main window is showing one row for every packet that it captured. And it's just a one row summary. It's not the whole pack, the whole message. We can select each one and look, in, look at it in more detail. We'll do that in a second. So first, let me sort these according to protocol. There's a column here, protocol. And you can see a lot of these messages are uh, TCP, which is an uh, in, uh, internet protocol. Also, you've got HTTP, which is uh, web traffic. So let's click on protocol and sort according to protocol. Now, uh, DNS, domain name service, ARP, address resolution protocol, and so on. So lots of different protocols being used. We're going to go straight to the HTTP messages. So let me just scroll down to HTTP. So if you remember, HTTP is, inter is basically World Wide Web. So let's take a look at, uh, at the first HTTP message. That's this one right here. So I selected. So I've highlighted that, that line. Now in the window below, it gives me more information about that particular packet. Actually, if you look all the way to the bottom window down here, you'll see basically hex. What's called a hex dump. Hex digits 0, 0, 1, 9, 0, 7, D4, and so on. So it's digits and letters A through F. This is the representation of the message in hex decimal. So just the bare zeros and ones represented in hex decimal. It's showing you that, which I'm not too interested in looking at right now, but sometimes you want to look at the bare hex. Now, above that, over in this window, it basically has taken this hex decimal and broken it down into fields according to the protocol. So uh, if we look here, notice here in light blue, it says hypertext transfer protocol. So I'll put the plus sign next to that. And what it does is, it says, look, I'll scroll down a little bit so we can see. What it does is, it realizes that this is an HTTP protocol packet. And so it, given that it's, it's that in that protocol, it knows the format of the message. So it knows these, this first piece of information should be the, uh, the get, and the next one should be the next header, next should be the next. So it organizes it in that way so that I can read it. So first line we see here is the get. 
uh, get HTTP 1.1. That's just uh, the, the get requesting the web page, get slash. So it's just selecting uh, whatever web page is available there, like the top level directory. Uh, and it's giving you the protocol number. This is how any kind of get message starts, is with a generic line like that. So it's requesting a website. And that's what happens when you start up a web browser, it goes to its default website, and that's what it's doing. And then you can look at the line below it, host slash dot org. That's because my default website is slash dot org, so the first thing it did was it went to slash dot org, requested the web page. And uh, you know, line after line, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see more headers, user agents, etc. So you can see I'm using Mozilla, you can see what version and so on. Uh, you can see all, all the information inside the packet. So that is Packet Capture for you, and uh, you can store it and uh, do all kinds of nice things to look at lots of details about each packet if you're interested in that. Thank you. Okay. Question. What protocols uh, require for internet communication? Internet communication protocol. TCP, uh, UTP IP. Which, which network device copy packet on to on port? Copy on packet on to on port. Router hub, hub switch, switch to own boss. Router hub, hub to own boss. Router hub. No, no. What is the protocol associated with the worldwide web? HTTP worldwide web. A manner protocol is likely to differ from a typical LAN protocol because managed protocol will ensure faster connection and have a high bandwidth than a typical LAN, consume less power, support more nodes, and have more bandwidth. Have high bandwidth, consume less power. Consume less power. The function of a packet has the to contain packet information by the container. Mark the ending of any packet now. Store, yes, the store the ending of the port. The packet snipper is so that it can use to record local traffic on this one to bucket nipper to bucket nipper a hub can be used to communicate between two then different protocol hub hub grid if one we need to use grid in the RTTP protocol a request Message is sent by a web layer to web server. Request web layer to web server. Request request to one hundred one hundred one hundred eighty seven so much. Packet have there have those one. Oh, we can try again. Network God. Okay. I will do it again. No. Uh, dissipate. Come some less power. Packet header. Again, content from the other. Okay. Star in brief, no, in brief, but the end to star in brief version. Two, four, two, now one hundred. Request Yahoo, Yahoo. Okay, so they asking me to do something. First, why the API web your computer, you need to uh, that that. Download, download and install Wireshark on a computer, start Wireshark and start packet capture. Open a browser on your computer and go to any web page of the Wireshark packet capture. And it's um, it, it to find the first 
DCP bucket with a record and hold shop those shop in your computer find the port number you and your computer you and share computer you show on the messenger to and pop the port DCP port See that messenger and make sure that the update is there on your computer. And the next mission is the computer. When, when the screen is made, I should make one more to make sure I should make one page with that to my machine in the next and the time I can share and the port and the port number in private in the computer. Uh, we will see it again. We've been talking about capturing packets on the network interface. I mentioned it before, and now we're going to just try it a little bit, let you see how to do it. Actually, that'll be one of the assignments too. You can give it, give it a try. So we'll start out by starting the Wireshark app application, which is going to be our packet, packet tab cache tool. So Wireshark, uh, I have the icon down here on the bottom. Is this Shark thing one? So I'll start that. All right. So network packet protocol analyzer. So if we look at Wireshark, let's pull it up a little bit. First thing it does is uh, right in the front screen, it gives me a list of devices, interface list here. Let's click on interface list. To see the interfaces. Now, right here is listing four interfaces, four different rows in this little, uh, this little window popped up. Now, each one of these interfaces is a network interface they can capture on Bluetooth, Wi Fi, Wired, uh, Ethernet, and so on. It's a little bit hard to tell which one's the right one, but I already know that is the bottom one, mostly because the number pack one is the right one, but I already know why it popped up. Click on interface list to see the interfaces. Now, right here is listing Wi Fi. We'll click that interface. Now, notice that Wireshark is, Wireshark is blank at the moment. Uh, that now, I see what they are. I'm curious what those are, but I'll look at those later. So, right now, we can talk to the web. We've got Wireshark capturing lots of packets. So, I'm going to tell it stop. We've captured enough. Click on capture. Stop right here. Okay, now it stopped. So we've already gotten over uh, 3,600 packets just in that short amount of time. Now, notice that uh, what it's showing here in the main window is showing one row for every packet that it captured. And it's just a one row summary. It's not the whole packet, the whole message. We can select each one and look, in, look at it in more detail. We'll do that in a second. So first, let me sort these according to protocol. This is column here protocol. And you can see a lot of these messages, uh, TCP, which is an uh, in, in internet protocol. Also, you've got HTTP, which is uh, web traffic. So let's click on protocol and sort according to protocol. Now, uh, DNS, domain name service, ARP, address resolution protocol, and so on. So lots of different protocols being used. We're going to go straight to the HTTP messages. So let me just scroll down to HTTP. So if you remember, HTTP is, inter is basically World Wide Web. So let's take a look at uh, the first HTTP message. That's this one right here. So I selected. So I've highlighted that, that line. Now in the window below, it gives me more information about that particular packet. Actually, if you look all the way to the bottom window down here, you'll see basically hex, what's called a hex dump. Hex digits 001907D4 and so on. So it's digits and letters A through two addresses I'm looking at right into fields according to the protocol. Scroll down a little bit so we can see. But it does it, it realizes that this is an HTTP protocol packet. And so it, given that it's, it's that in that protocol, it knows the format of the message. So it knows. So first line we see here is get. Uh, get HTTP 1.1. So that's just uh, the, uh, at, and it's giving website. And that's what happens when you start up a web browser. It goes to flat.org, request to the web page. That is packet capture for you. And uh, you can store it and uh, do all kinds of nice things to look at lots of details about each packet if you're interested in that. Thank you. Still do not understand, but okay. See you once again. Interesting. Watch out, I already installed that. Start watch out and start. Uh, Packet capture open browser on your computer and go into any web page. Stop a white shot packet capture and set it to find the first to find the first TCP bucket with a red part in find the port number P you and your computer white shot will go to show on the messenger to inform. See that messenger on show. Yeah, so always. So you call this. Packet capture. Okay. So we need Y sharp. Sharp. Why? Why is that with me? Ah, uh, we don't have WhatsApp yet. Okay. Why? This one, <laughs> not for when, this one. Sorry. So, 
with me. Yes, we have that. Sure, we have that. Why it cannot open? Okay. Oh, it opened a lot. Install. So we go to a shop. Yeah, we have something like this. Okay. 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 So we have white shop here. And what do we need to do? What do we need to do is let's say okay we will uh, we will do Wi-Fi and then now we start Wi-Fi now we open uh, I will reload. Yeah, we lost the Coursera and then we can stop it here and what should we do next? Okay, so let me to find the first DCP Okay, we will do like this and we will find the first PCP this one and catch a party where I get with the report and find the port number P here on your computer port number uh, okay So we open that and we will have something like this. This one. So find the port number B you port number port number frame. Internet protocol. Interface something like this. Show four 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 three something like this. You why shark view to show only messenger to and from this part. Show four 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 three. Okay four four three. So now we will shut on the that. Oh, sorry, I have a phone call. 